Hello BookTube, I'm Jonathan, and if you're anything like me, you're probably waging a never-ending battle with your TBR. There's just too much good sci-fi and not enough time. So I came up with a bit of a game to play in order to decide which authors to prioritize and move up my TBR. It's pretty simple, so you can try it out too if you like the sound of it. Here's what I did. I picked up a copy of Science Fiction Hall of Fame Volume 1, which contains 26 of the best science fiction short stories written between 1929 and 1964, as voted on by the members of the Science Fiction Writers of America. It features famous authors, as well as some authors you may not have read yet. From the collection, I chose five of the authors that are on my TBR, and decided to read one short story from each of them in order to get a taste for their writing style. Whichever one I liked the most, I knew I had to pick up a book from them and prioritize them on my TBR. Each of these authors were highly influential on the genre, but if you look at the number of ratings their books have on Goodreads compared to some other classic sci-fi writers, they might not be quite as well known by modern readers. So I was excited to finally get to them myself and to be able to discuss them. So I'm gonna go through each of these five authors, give a mini review for each of the short stories and let you know which one came out on top. So up first we have A.E. Van Vogt. Van Vogt and his work are closely associated with the golden age of science fiction, and some of his most well-known works include The Voyage of the Space Beagle, The World of Nale, The Weapon Shops of Isha, and Slan. Interestingly, when the 1979 film Alien was released, it was noted that the plot closely resembled two stories written by Vogt, and those were The Black Destroyer and Discord in Scarlet, which he later put together in his novel The Voyage of the Space Beagle. Vogt actually successfully sued for plagiarism and won an out-of-court settlement of $50,000 from 20th Century Fox. Van Vogt left a lasting legacy on science fiction and has been recognized by multiple organizations, including being inducted into the Science Fiction and Fantasy Hall of Fame by the Museum of Pop Culture and being recognized as a grandmaster by the Science Fiction Writers of America. The short story of his selected for this Hall of Fame collection is titled The Weapon Shop and was originally published in 1942. The premise is a small businessman that is loyal to the Empress is outraged when a weapon shop that sells fantastic technology appears because they are not controlled by the Empress. In a short amount of time, Vogt does a great job of building the world and developing the social landscape. Different characters have distinct views on the issues revolving around the weapon shop. The weapon shop is rather mysterious and everything you learn about it captured my imagination. However, the story outside of the weapon shop I found to be comparatively less interesting. Every time we went away from it, I kind of felt like I wanted to return to the most interesting thing. If you like this story, Van Vogt added more to it with his fix-up novel, The Weapon Shops of Isha. I'm definitely intrigued to read more by him, so we'll have to wait and see if this one comes out on top. All right, up next we have Fritz Leiber. Fritz Leiber is a legendary writer publishing works in the science fiction as well as fantasy and horror genres. Leiber won six times at the Hugo Awards as well as three more times at the Nebula Awards across the short story, novella, and novel formats. And like Van Vo, he is a member of the Science Fiction and Fantasy Hall of Fame as well as being an SFWA Grandmaster. Leiber is considered one of the fathers of the sword and sorcery genre and some of his most famous science fiction works include The Wanderer and The Big Time. The short story of his selected for the Hall of Fame collection was titled Coming Attraction, and it was originally published in 1950. Coming Attraction is set in a dystopian future that is ravaged by war. It depicts some interesting technology as well as cultural trends. For example, it is fashionable for almost all women to wear masks. The story explores some interesting themes, and I found the setup to be intriguing. But the story revolves around a manic pixie dream girl and a white knight savior, and I found this to be less compelling, and I found the ending to be a little anticlimactic. Leiber has written so many things, I'll definitely have to read more at some point, but this particular story didn't bump them up to the top of my TBR. Okay, for our third author in today's video, we have Frederick Brown. Frederick Brown is an author most well known for writing in the short story format, in the science fiction and mystery genres. He wrote five science fiction novels, including his most well-known works, What Mad Universe and Martians Go Home. A lot of his work predated the Hugo Awards, but he was nominated for six retrospective Hugo Awards, one of which was his short story that was selected for the Hall of Fame collection, which is titled Arena and was originally published in 1944. The premise for the story is that humans are at war with a mysterious alien species called the Outsiders. 
Our main character, Bob Carson, finds himself in a strange scenario, which could end up determining the fate of both species. If the name of the story sounds familiar, that might be because it was used as inspiration for a famous episode of Star Trek by the same name. The short story quickly sets up an adventurous premise with high stakes, and I was completely hooked from beginning to end. It does a great job of introducing problems, and then proposing solutions to those, and exploring why they will or won't work. I also really enjoyed the prose, as it painted a vivid setting, depicted tense action, and conveyed the main character's thoughts and emotions. I would highly recommend this story to all sci-fi readers, and it's definitely a contender to move Brown up my TBR. Alright, up next for our penultimate author, we have John W. Campbell. John W. Campbell primarily wrote short-form science fiction between the years of 1930 and 1938. His most well-known work is the novella Who Goes There, which won a retrospective Hugo Award, has been adapted three times, most famously by John Carpenter with his 1982 film The Thing. While Campbell was a successful writer, he is perhaps most well-known for being the editor of Astounding Science Fiction, later renamed Analog Science Fiction and Fact, which he was the editor for from 1937 to 1971. Campbell was greatly influential on the golden age of science fiction and was inducted into the Science Fiction and Fantasy Hall of Fame, but he did alienate some of his fellow science fiction writers with his controversial opinions. The short story of his selected for the Hall of Fame collection was titled Twilight and was originally published in 1934. The premise of this story is a hitchhiker who claims to be a time traveler recounts his experiences from traveling 7 million years in the future. At first, I found the story a little bit confusing, as we have a narrator telling the story of another character, telling the story as it was told to them by the time traveler. So, we're essentially getting a third-hand telling of this story. Perhaps Campbell chose this method of storytelling to add a layer of mystery to it, or a level of subjectivity, but I don't think it was seamlessly executed, as for me it wasn't immediately clear when we were shifting perspectives between these three characters. However, once we got into the meat of the story, I did think it had some interesting ideas in regard to what a far future society might look like, and what kinds of problems humanity might face. Speculatively, I think it was rather ambitious, especially considering it was written in 1934. But I will say, for me, another hurdling block was the prose, as it was very dry. The story itself reminded me a little bit of The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury, but Bradbury is just such a poetic writer, whereas for me, this story read a little bit more like an article. Ultimately, while I am intrigued by his novella Who Goes There, because I'm such a big fan of The Thing, I didn't particularly love the writing style of this short story, and having subsequently learned some of the strange things that he said about slavery and segregation, it makes me less excited to read more from Campbell. Alright, for our fifth and final author we have James Blish. Blish is known for being among the literary critics of the genre, and for applying the same standards to science fiction as serious literature. He's also credited for coining the term gas giant when referring to large planetary bodies. Blish wrote in both the short story and novel formats, and his most well-known works include his Star Trek novels, A Case of Conscience, and Cities in Flight. Blish was inducted into the Science Fiction and Fantasy Hall of Fame, and won the Hugo Award for A Case of Conscience. The short story of his, selected for the Hall of Fame collection, was titled Surface Tension, and was originally published in 1952. The premise for Surface Tension is that a human colonization ship crash lands on a planet that is mostly covered by shallow pools of water. The human engineers decide to genetically engineer descendants that are going to be able to live on this planet. And the story mostly follows this genetically engineered species on their adventures. Of these five stories, this is definitely the hardest sci-fi, as it explores the microbiology of the species, as well as the nature of their environment. Blish does an excellent job of bringing this world to life, but I think the ideas are perhaps a little bit stronger than the story itself. So for me, this is one that I found slightly more impressive than I did enjoyable. So there you go, which of these five short stories is the winner? Well, I thought all of them were worth reading, but for me, there was a clear standout, and that was Arena by Frederick Brown. This is one of my favorite short stories that I've read, and I definitely need to bump Frederick Brown nearer the top of my TBR. He has a few intriguing novels, but the one that looked the most interesting to me was What Mad Universe, so I went ahead and picked up a copy of that. 
Let me know your thoughts on these authors as well as this game. Try it out for yourself. It doesn't necessarily have to be this exact collection or these same authors. Just pick some short stories from some authors you're interested in and let me know who ends up being the winner. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash or just gently click the subscribe button. And if you really enjoyed it, consider checking out the perks of becoming a Patreon member, where you can become one of my robots, androids, or cyborgs like Nima and New Eden, Half Ogre, Zakawe, and the Hall of Fame Colin. And you can find more sci-fi content over here.